much for the important work that you do in this community and for hosting this event. And also I want to thank all of you uh, for being here and for your own contributions and your own support um, to the Bothell community. community. Um, I'm honored to be here today to deliver my 10th State of the City Address. I think there's probably some in this room that thought I'd never make it to my second State of the City Address. <laughs> But actually, I am humbled and I'm grateful to be part of such an amazing city and to work alongside some incredible people um, who make this community special. Um, as businesses and as residents of Bothell, you play a critical role in the city's health and in its future. 2013 was an exciting year for the city of Bothell, and there's a lot of good news to report. After all the years of envisioning a new uh, future for the city of Bothell, for planning and for seeking and securing the funds needed to transform our community, our revitalization is well underway. In the past year, downtown Bothell has not, under, not only has undergone transformation of its roads and infrastructure, we've also seen a tremendous amount of private sector vertical development um, as well. Our community is also growing through annexations. On February 28th, we will welcome 6,000 new residents uh, to our community from unincorporated King County. Um, through all this growth and change, um, your city leaders have continued their careful oversight of Bothell's financial situation to ensure that our expenses are aligned with our revenues and that the city will remain strong in the future. None of this would have been possible without the supportive and engaged business community, um, caring citizens and community leaders working alongside Bothell's elected officials who are dedicated to improving the quality of life um, for residences and businesses. Um, we have so much to be proud of in the city of Bothell. I'm also grateful for the dedication and the service of our city employees who work extremely hard to ensure that your local government operations are both effective and efficient. Um, together with the city council, these are the people um, who strive to preserve Bothell's exemplary quality of life and work very hard to improve it every day. Today I'm going to be talking about the various downtown projects, um, both public as well as private, as well as what annexation means for the city, and what's being done to ensure budget sustainability. So to begin with, um, let's take a look at some recent progress that has been made, and this will be illustrated by a short video.
Bothell citizens, businesses and thank you and, and community leaders came together, together several years ago. <laughs> came together several years ago to really create the future that we see unfolding before us now. We're now in the fourth year of downtown construction and watching that vision come to life. To date, the city has invested over $94 million in vital capital projects that were part of a $150 million uh, infrastructure program planned and approved several years ago. Our early economic projections indicate that our strategic actions and our investments would leverage $650 million of private sector investment. Today I'm proud to, to say that over $200 million um, has been invested in Bothell's community as a result of those actions um, or is in the, the, uh, the pipeline today. Much has happened since Bothell broke ground on its first downtown revitalization project in 2010. All around, Bothell's downtown has seen more vertical construction as the transformation envisioned by Bothell citizens takes place. Let's look at a few of the public and private projects that are underway um, or coming down the pipe. Starting first with the Crossroads SR522 realignment uh, project. This is the largest capital investment in the city's um, history, 104-year-old history. The project is currently scheduled um, and is expected to be completed in late spring. The crossroads shifted traffic to the new SR522 in August of last year. Since then, construction has focused on connecting the streets, installing the utilities, and completing the sidewalks. This is a fully funded project and will reduce traffic congestion and increase safety on this critical commute and freight corridor both now and in the future. Like any construction project, uh, detours are necessary to accommodate the construction process and for downtown Bothell this has meant restricted access to and from Main Street from the junction of SR 522 and the Boulevard. I'm pleased now that that um, access has been restored uh, for Main Street uh, during daytime hours. Another important project is for Bothell's downtown is the Multiway Boulevard project. This will ultimately change the look and the function of Bothell Way from the new section from SR 522 um, north to Reader Way. The first phase was started last summer and includes the west side of the boulevard from northeast 183rd again to Reader Way. The construction of this phase has been designed to correspond to the private development that is occurring on the west side of the roadway, which includes McMinimins, uh, Six Hoaks, Six Oaks, uh, the senior housing assistant um, group housing shag development. Once phase one is complete, uh, these five city blocks on the west side will include vehicle access lanes, um, uh, vehicle parking lanes, a wide uh, 13 and a half foot sidewalks, and 70 new trees um, along the access lane of the boulevard. The second stage of the improvements for, to SR 522 near Wayne Curve has been under construction and has essentially been completed. Uh, the portion of the project, which is known as Stage 2A, um, extends east from the western border of Bothell, meeting up with the Wayne Curve improvements that were completed in 2012. This recent phase of the project added a transit lane from Wayne Curve to the western city limits, sidewalks, uh, storm drainage, and some water quality improvements, landscaping, street lighting, all enhanced the west entrance uh, to the city of Bothell. One of the changes coming to downtown Bothell is the relocation of Horse Creek. Currently, this um, is, creek is located in a large pipe that meanders its way uh, through downtown. The creek will be moved to a new corridor, which um, allows for new developments to take place and also allows uh, the creek to become an open channel, fish passable stream. Additionally, the project would reduce and solve some downtown flooding issues, and a significant portion of the expenses associated with the Horse Creek project are paid for um, by new private development. Ultimately, the new mouth of the stream um, as it flows into the Sammamish River will be a wider, more natural uh, delta. Uh, bidding on the project is scheduled for this spring, and construction will soon start after, and it's expected to take between 18 and 24 months to complete the project. We have more work to do to finish the downtown transformation. Um, a high priority for the city is to secure funding to complete the remaining infrastructure and facility investments um, needed to support the community's reimagined downtown. When Bothell started on this revitalization project nearly 10 years ago, there was no funding. Um, however, we secured grants and other innovative funding mechanisms in order to break ground on what is now $94 million worth of projects. 
These key projects for which additional funding um, is needed include one, adding park amenities to the park at Bothell Landing, which is being expanded as a result of the Crossroads project, finishing the multi-way boulevard project, enhancing and extending Main Street, and completing the city center block with civic facilities. Finishing these projects um, is not going to be easy, but as recent history has revealed, uh, the power of a community's dream cannot be underestimated to motivate people to, to action and to create a resolve in this community that we can create and shape our future of what was only dreamed and imagined 10 years ago. So let me share some of the details of each of these projects with you. We'll start first with the Park of Bothell Landing. In 2010, the City Council adopted a new master plan for this park. Future enhancements of the park include a welcoming plaza and water feature at the junction of 522 and Bothell Way, a plaza cafe, uh, walking trails and wetland restoration, just to name a few. With the realignment of SR 522 uh, Bothell, in Bothell Way, we added three acres to this nearly 15 acre park today. Um, the enhanced park will provide opportunities, of course, for residents, area employers, and visitors to really relax and enjoy the community's riverfront. The enhancements that are programmed in the master plan are expected to cost $13 million. So phasing uh, some of these improvements over time may be a good solution if we're not able to fully fund the complete master plan at this time. Main Street, 100 year history um, and legacy make it the heart and soul of Bothell's downtown. The extension of Main Street and the enhancements of the existing Main Street will integrate the historic district with the overall plan development that's envisioned for downtown. These projects will instruct uh, reconstruct the entire streetscape from building front to building front, which is about 60 feet in width. We'll add gathering places and public spaces, wide pedestrian sidewalks, um, additional parking, high visibility sidewalks, street lighting, landscaping, all the street furniture um, to ensure that the character in this historic street is preserved and it remains to be a viable, attractive location to live, work, visit, um, and shop. The Main Street extension enhancements are expected to cost approximately $9.4 million. The Multiway Boulevard project is a street like few in America. Um, it provides a vehicle mobility um, like other arterial streets. We'll have two lanes of uh, traffic in each direction with an alternating left turn lane. Bordering these lanes will be a train line uh, median, a slow moving access lane, parallel parking stalls, and a gracious uh, tree-line uh, wide sidewalk. This configuration will provide a wide buffer between vehicles and pedestrians. The unique layout of the boulevard will support economic revitalization of our downtown. The boulevard is key as it's designed to connect the historic development in our downtown to the new development we know is going to occur uh, west of the boulevard. The remaining faces of the boulevard um, will cost approximately $28 million. The city center block is designed to create a vibrant and dynamic mixed use development. A new city hall is a fundamental part of the city center block development. The city hall will enhance the strong community core by one, providing for commercial uses um, along the boulevard and the northeast 183rd. Well, two will provide over 165 parking stalls that will be used during evening and weekend hours uh, by business and retail patrons. And three will provide a civic presence. For both, as well as uh, public gathering places and a significant office tenant in our downtown, which is all envisioned um, by our community. The City Hall's facility is planned as a lease development project using the nonprofit benefit corporation to issue tax exempt bonds under IRS ruling 6320. Um, under this method, a nonprofit facilitating entity enter, enters into a lease um, with the city and then is contractually obligated to provide that facility uh, to the city on time and on budget. At the expiration of the lease, likely 25 years, the city will own the facility, no strings attached. Uh, th this process is expected to save millions of dollars uh, for the city while also providing and constructing a quality building that will last for the next 50 to 75 years. The city has chosen Vulcan Real Estate to serve as a developer for the city hall. The city is updating the plans now and as well as the price estimate and revisiting to make sure that we have sized the, the, sized the facility correctly um, based on the community's needs. The work's expected to be completed this spring and then in April and May, the council will consider the guaranteed maximum price to construct the facility. 
If the council determines uh, to move forward with the facility, uh, construction could commence this summer, taking advantage of currently historically low interest rates and, bef and locking in a price under the guaranteed maximum price scenario before labor and material costs um, increase further. The Bothell community created a vision for its downtown, and that vision um, required the city to make significant public investments to attract the private capital necessary to carry out um, and make Bothell's community's vision a real reality. The funding used to improve and lay out the roads of Bothell's downtown is spurring growth and attracting millions of dollars by the private sector. Let me share with you some of the early successes of our activities. The Six Oaks development, which you uh, viewed in the video, is currently um, under development. It's adjacent to the Anderson Building property. It's expected to open this fall. Uh, once complete, development, which is owned and managed by uh, Main Street Property Group, will include 203 apartment units and approximately 6,300 square feet of retail uh, ground floor um, space. The Main Street Property Group also recently announced that uh, Morrow Bistro will open in the Six Oaks uh, this fall. Amaro Bistro is a secret, second restaurant location for um, Nick Waltz, the owner of the El Bistro, the iconic Italian restaurant um, tucked away in Seattle's Pike Place Market. Another development by Main Street Property Group is the 104. Um, this is located at the intersection of 104th Avenue Northeast and Northeast 185th Street. 104 opened last year, and it's a modern style apartment building uh, featuring 115 one and two bedroom um, units on three floors. Closer to the University of Washington Bothell Cascadia Community College um, is the village at Beardsley Crossing. And this is a mixed use project when built out will include 450 apartments and about 52,000 square feet of retail space. The village at Beardsley Crossing, Crossing is pre-leasing pre -leasing now and the first stage is expected to be completed this spring. Last year, restaurateur uh, John Howie announced that he would be opening a restaurant and pub um, at the village in 2014. Another sign of growth and expansion is what's happening at the University of Washington Bothell Cascadia campus. It's now the fastest growing campus and the largest branch campus um, for in Washington. Construction on the $62 million math and science building will be substantially complete. Um, in March, and it will be open for classes in the fall of, of this year. The building will allow the campus to serve another thousand full-time students. McMinimins continues to move forward with its design and construction plans of creating a hotel, a restaurant, a pub, a movie theater, and much more at the Anderson Building and Associated Properties. They're also working on the construction financing to begin development. To date, they have invested over $3 million into the project, plus they have committed to providing the public benefits, such as free use of their pool um, to Bothell residents for the next 15 years. Additional information about the time for the start of construction is expected very soon. The city is also seeking buyers and development on other land that the city um, owns and is surplusing um, as part of its redevelopment plans for downtown, which is all consistent with the community's vision. Many of these sites are waiting for uh, SR 522, the crossroads to be completed, as well as the completion of other public infrastructure, as well as environmental cleanup um, to be finished on some of the lots. I'm pleased to announce that I'm currently working on a purchase and sale and development agreements with two well-known purchasers and developers for blocks um, E, F, and G, and block L, which is shown on the screen, that will further bring the community's vision uh, to life. Both of these agreements are expected to be completed and then ready for council consideration in March this year. You've heard me speak previously about the role of public-private partnerships and the city's outrageously ambitious goals it has for its reimagined downtown. Public-private partnerships, I believe, is a phrase that is often overused and undersupplied. Um, in today's economic environment, I've found that genuine partnerships are needed to provide the return on investment to make valuable use of both time and energy um, for both the private and public sectors. Building a community, um, revitalizing a downtown, and creating a special place is difficult work. Um, cities can grow or they can change by choice or by chance. I think we would all prefer the route of choice and design. This requires a true public-private partnership um, and demonstrated commitment, skin in the game, and a clear and unwavering focus of what we, the future we want to achieve. The public sector must provide the vision, 
the business plan and the needed infrastructure investments that will support the development like we have done. Cities must create predictability for those who choose to invest in their community like we have done. Additionally, cities can assemble properties uh, for public amenities, often leaving behind remnant pieces or surplus land that can then be redeveloped by the private sector as part of a larger redevelopment, again, like we have done in this community. The private sector must provide the expertise and the capital necessary to create the vertical development and animate the downtown plan consistent with the community's vision. Additionally, the private sector must embrace the community's vision if supported by the market. Developments must be based on what people love about their community. It doesn't mean avoiding changes. It does mean anchoring the changes in the essential character of the community, which will be supported longer and with greater emphasis by the community. From the perspective of a city manager and someone who is passionate about creating great sustainable places, so much of what local governments do, so much of what we're responsible for, what businesses or residents want and need are the result of how we develop and how we occupy real estate. The best developments, the developments that provide the greatest returns on investments are those that are entwined with public-private partnerships. I mentioned earlier that we started the revitalization process uh, many years ago when residences and businesses, schools and government came together to develop a fresh new vision for Bothell's future. The Bothell community got it right and we developed a plan that has been successfully guiding the city through um, the Great Recession, supported by the use of the public-private partnership model I've just described. Downtown is transforming before our eyes. Here's a summary of the 10 most important actions from my perspective the city has taken over the last eight years in pursuit of the community's dream of a vibrant and a walkable downtown. Action one, during better economic times, we separate our ongoing revenues and expenses from our one-time revenues and expenses creating a funding account that is fueling our downtown investment today. We engage the Bothell community in a multi-year planning process that continues to guide the city's actions today. We identified those infrastructure investments that would achieve the city's targeted return on investment. We purchased 25 acres of land within the downtown, which we are now strategically selling under our role as a master developer. Every purchase and sale agreement that's accompanied by a development agreement is an opportunity for a public-private partnership. In the process of assembling land and constructing the needed infrastructure to support the redeveloped downtown, we relocated 32 businesses and tore down 30 buildings, turning back decades of auto-oriented uh, development, making way for our reimagined city. For the last several years, we've also been performing a multi-million dollar environmental cleanup of the downtown to ready it for development today. We launched an initiative to improve how we process development permits to increase the predictability for those who choose to invest in Bothell. We assumed the role of a master developer when the recession occurred and shouldered private sector risk by holding property the city assembled, thereby mitigating the cost of our private sector partners. We also started the largest capital investment, as I've mentioned, in the city's history, a $60 million infrastructure project, you know it as Crossroads in our downtown that was supported through a pilot tax increment financing program offered by the state several years ago. Crossroads, of course, is now in its final stage of construction. And again, to date, we've broken ground on an astonishing $94 million of public investment, all within an existing 104-year-old community. You know, the oxygen of development <coughs> is capital, and without it, nothing can happen. The city of Bothell is strategically attracting private capital through public-private partnerships, as part of its broader economic strategy to revitalize downtown based on the vision created by this community. There's much to be proud of today and much to look forward to in the future. There's also more good news regarding annexation for our community. In November, the Bothell City Council adopted an ordinance annexing all nine of Bothell's designated uh, potential annexation areas in King County. On February 28th, we will officially welcome 6,000 of our neighbors as citizens of the city of Bothell. The annexations were initiated in February of 2010 and processed under the interlocal agreement method as provided by state law. This method doesn't involve an election, um, is most suitable for infill um, annexations which square off the city boundi boundaries and are undisputed by any other jurisdiction. The nine annexation areas have been designated by the city and county plans as part of Bothell's logical service area since the mid-1990s and will eliminate a number of pockets of unincorporated territory that have been difficult for King County to serve. 
We take great pride in the quality of services that are provided by um, the city of Bothell, whether we're fixing a pothole, responding to an emergent situation by police or fire, hosting a recreation class, or just keeping the roads passable during the winter. And we're eager, eager to show our new citizens just how special it is to be a part of the city of Bothell. The city will add staff, which is fully supported by the annexation revenues within these areas. This way, all of Bothell can continue to receive the same high quality services um, that our current residents enjoy today. In addition to extending our services to the 6,000 uh, uh, new neighbors, um, the King County annexations will also benefit the 34,000 people who call Bothell home today. Expansion of the city's tax base enhances Bothell's financial capabilities to build and maintain roads, develop parks, acquire emergency service vehicles, and take other similar actions to improve the citizens' quality of life. Additionally, the substantial growth in population uh, Bothell will be a city of close to 41,000 um, following that annexation, giving the city added influence in Olympia and also making us more competitive uh, for state and federal grants. All of the growth and the change coming to Bothell helps put the city on a strong financial footing uh, going forward. Bothell has been fortunate in that its diversified revenues and its sound financial strategies, strategies have largely buffered the city from the worst effects of the economy. All, however, Bothell has not been uh, immune from the effects of the Great uh, Recession. The city's 2013-2014 budget required some very difficult decisions. We weren't alone. Cities across the nation have been struggling with the structural deficiencies between revenues and expenses, and they had to make tough choices. In Bothell, we have been consistently aligning our revenues um, against our expenses, and will continue to do so in the future. The 2013-2014 budget includes $96 million in infrastructure investments for Bothell's most pressing capital needs, such as land acquisition, facilities, parks, and utility systems. Many of the projects within the 13-14 budget not only address an important community need, but they are also designed to provide a, a return on investment by stimulating private sector growth that generates both one-time and ongoing revenues for our community. This includes projects in the downtown area, but also projects such as the Bothell Everett Highway improvements north of the downtown. This project, which is now under construction, widens the roadway so that there are two lanes of traffic, traffic traveling in each direction um, and a center of turn lane as well as a traffic signal. The city's budget continues our past practice of being disciplined to use our one-time revenue sources along with our restricted capital funds for the purposes of improving our infrastructure and our facilities. Another prudent practice the city is looking at in terms of creating long-term viability is our services. In this new economic era, balancing a budget is no longer a matter of determining what services we want to provide, but what services we can afford to provide. With this in mind, the city embarked on a year-long process that looks into how fire and emergency medical services, EMS, can be best be provided to the residents in the future. The city of Bothell currently operates its own fire department. A recent study of the city's fire services concluded that the cost of providing the current model of fire and EMS services is going to con will continue to climb. Sustaining the current model in the long term will require that additional resources be diverted from important public safety or other quality of life services and are a combination of tax increases and service reductions. Because of the rising cost of providing fire services, the City of Bothell has partnered with the Woodenville Fire and Rescue, North Shore Fire District, and the Snohomish County Fire District 10 to look into the feasibility of, of establishing a regional fire authority, or RFA. An RFA would combine the local departments and the districts, creating a special purpose district th through the vote of the people. State law provides, that the provides a framework for forming an RFA in order to create efficiencies while still maintaining some local control. Delivering fire and EMS from a regional body has both benefits as well as disadvantages. An RFA is attractive because it has the ability to reduce overhead, to eliminate duplication of service, coordinate assets from a system-wide perspective, and effectively put more boots on the ground. Conversely, a jurisdiction uh, that can provide a single point of leadership, oversight, and financial stewardship of the public safety as well as other municipal services has been a benefit for Bothell residents and businesses. Fire and EMS already operate within a regional context by virtue of its uh, mutual aid response models. 
However, we continue, for the most part, to individually control and fund fire agencies um, separately. It's unlikely that any large-scale state or county regionalization plan for fire and EMS will ever materialize, really due to the number of political boundaries and the varying interests of different uh, cities and fire districts. Nonetheless, a regionalization plan and benefits are scalable and can provide both immediate as well as long-term value to Bothell residents and its partner agencies if managed effectively. This past summer, the Bothell Council approved moving ahead with a planning committee that will look into whether an RFA is the right direction for our community. Several initial meetings took place in the fall last year and are going to be continuing uh, throughout the year at varying locations. The public is encouraged to attend the meetings and there are opportunities to comment. Links about the, meeting about the meeting location and times can be found on the city's website. If the planning committee finds that a regional fire authority in this area is feasible, it would then need to be approved by each of the elected bodies of those partner agencies, the City of Bothell, Woodinville Fire and Rescue, North Shore uh, Fire District, and the Snohomish County Fire District 10, before a measure can be placed on the ballot before voters. And this is a process that's expected to take at least a year. So I invite you to get involved in this exploration process by reading further information on the city's website, attending one of the planning committee meetings, and ultimately, if the process leads to a ballot, to vote. Your input's important um, in determining how care and protection will be provided for residences as well as businesses related to fire and EMS services. You know, achieving a community's goal has required the city to lean into the recession, to make investments when private interests couldn't, making the necessary public investments that strengthen our community in the most difficult of times. There's certainly more work to be done to ensure the city is successful in meeting public expectations in a sustainable fashion. But if we continue to exercise prudent financial discipline and we remain vigilant to the practice of living within our means, Bothell can continue to be one of the best places to live, work, and to enjoy. City government is in the business of providing public services that are valued by its citizens. Today, more than ever, citizens are asking their governments to do more with less, thereby heightening that value proposition. Communities have hopes and they have dreams, and they look to their leaders to deliver upon those requests. We are implementing an ambitious community vision that meets the need of both our residential and our commercial residents. We are bringing this vision to fruition by providing convenient, accessible, and predictable public services, and by creating a vibrant place to live, to do business, and to visit. Thank you for your vision, and I thank you for the commitment to Bothell. Bothell is and will always be an amazing community.